So, when is the best time to observe stars? Well, the best time to observe stars is at night time. During the daytime, we don't see a great deal of stars because uh, the sun is in the sky. And if the sun is in the sky, stars aren't very bright, so there's not going to be a lot of contrast. You are not going to see a great deal of stars. So the best time to see stars is at night time and it's around midnight okay so around midnight so after sunset before sunrise that's the best time to see stars um, the best time to, to observe many stars is in the winter why because nights are longer the sun sets sooner the sun rises later this is all obviously ridiculously obvious but um, it's in the summer months you can obviously the weather's usually better so there's less clouds in the sky but the hours of daylight uh, are more the hours of night time are fewer um, and the sky isn't as dark in the summer another factor is the moon the best time to observe stars is when there isn't a moon in the sky or if there is a moon, it's only a, a little moon, like a crescent or a new moon. So that's a, another thing to consider. The best time to see stars is when the sun is on the opposite side of the celestial sphere. Okay, this diagram, the red circle represents the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun throughout the year. And we'll see that the, the right ascension of the sun changes throughout the year. On March the 21st, the right ascension of the sun is 0, 0,100 hours. June the 21st, it's 0, 0,600. September the 21st, it's about 1,200 hours. December the 21st, it's about 1,800 hours. Now, the best time to see a star is when it's nowhere near the sun, when it's opposite the sun, on the celestial sphere. So if you want to observe stars which have a right ascension of about 600 hours, the best time to observe them will be in the winter. Why? Because the sun will be on the opposite side of the celestial sphere. Its right ascension will be 12 hours more than that, which is about 1800 hours. These dates obviously correspond to the vernal equinox, the summer solstice, the autumnal equinox and the winter solstice. This is the same thing again. Stars with a right ascension of around 0600 hours, they'll be in the middle of the sky at midnight on around December the 21st. Why? Because the sun, the right ascension of the sun is will be about 1800 hours it will be on the opposite side of the celestial sphere. As a result of this, some constellations are best viewed in the winter, some constellations are best viewed in the summer. Okay, this is repeating what I said. The best time to view a star is when the sun is on the opposite side of the celestial sphere. So, summer constellations here, uh, stars with a right ascension of around 1800 because the right ascension of the sun will be around 600. Um, so these are typical summer constellations like Cygnus in the summer. You might recognize the, the summer triangle there. Deneb, Vega and Alta is the summer triangle. Hercules, Bootes. These are in the sky, very prominent uh, around midnight in the middle of the summer. Winter constellations, there'll be ones which have a right ascension of around 600 hours uh, because the sun's right ascension will be about 1800 hours. So constellations like Gemini and Taurus and Orion and Cancer, uh, they are winter constellations. There are some constellations which you can see throughout the year and they're the ones which have circumpolar stars. They're the ones which have high declinations. So they're quite close to the northern celestial pole. 
um, and you can view those at any time of year. But there are summer constellations and winter constellations. The best time to view a star is when it is culminating. So when is a star culminating? Well, talking about its altitude, it's when its altitude is biggest. Um, I mean, certainly the star has to be above the horizon. And then when its altitude is greatest, that's when it's highest in the sky. There's lots of phone apps that will tell you the altitude of various objects in the sky at different times. So you can plan your stargazing session using them. The best time to view a star is when it is culminating. Now, uh, using equatorial coordinates, which is right ascension and declination, um, on an evening we want to view the star when it's culminating. If we know what your local sidereal time is, then that will help you to decide that. Your local sidereal time, I've talked about this in another video, um, is basically whatever your local sidereal time is, a star with that right ascension will be culminating at that time. A star will be culminating when its right ascension is equal to your local sidereal time. Um, there are lots of phone apps out there. Um, I've got this one on my phone called My Sidereal Time and you can find out what your local sidereal time is and that will give you a clue as to what stars would be culminating at that time. So I plan to do some serious stargazing tonight around 11 p.m. for an hour or two. What objects can I expect to see in the sky? Well, without using any clever technology, I mean, I would check the weather forecast first of all. Uh, I'm not going to get my stuff ready and get my telescope out of its bag if it's going to be cloudy or rainy. Um, check whether the moon will be in the sky and what its phase will be. Uh, and then you can figure out the typical right ascension of the stars that you're likely to see. If you know what the right ascension of the sun is and add 12 hours to that, then those stars will be culminating around midnight. Uh, what I would probably do, actually, is I'd crank up Stellarium. I would fast forward Stellarium to 11 p.m. and I would have a look and see what's in the sky, see what's interesting in the sky, see what constellations there's going to be, see if there's any planets, see what the phase of the moon is, etc, etc, and just use Stellarium.